In this lecture, we're going to look in detail at the first three options here in the sidebar, the home, my tasks, and our inbox. So first of all, because I'm going to be going throughout this course back and forth between the view that Andrew has and the view that I have, I'm going to go ahead and add him a profile picture as well. And this time I'll show you how to do that. So we're here on the settings and we just want to go ahead and upload a photo for him. And I just find this really nice touch when you have a bigger team. Otherwise, you're just seeing this kind of initials of everyone and it's a little bit it's a little bit impersonal. It's also sometimes confusing if people have the same initials. So it's always nice with a little picture. And I'm going to get rid of all of these starting tasks over here as well, just so that we don't have all of this. Whoop, click the wrong thing there. All of these things just, just distracting us. Basically, let's remove that whole widget. So here in the home page, we have our my tasks, our projects and the people that we collaborate with. And there's a few different options here. You can see, of course, your upcoming, your overdue tasks and your completed. So we have just those three test tasks that we got rid of before. Um, and we don't have any projects right now. You would see them over here as well if we had any projects and people. It's just me, me and Andrew right now in this workspace. Are my tasks again, we don't have any tasks to filter between, but they'll automatically be put into these four default sections. So recently assigned, due today, due next week and due later. I'll show you later on in the course how to make sections yourself. Um, and if you want to be filtering the tasks, once you have some tasks in here, it's a bit like in Excel, you just go ahead and click on the column header, and then it will go ahead and filter the things that you see in here. You also have the option to group uh, tasks based on the date they were created by and who they were created by, and you can sort them as well. So there's quite a lot of options here and you can customize it to how you prefer to look at it. And then we have our inbox and you notice that there was that little uh, yellow dot right there that's just disappeared as I've clicked in and that little dot is telling us that we have messages in our Asana inbox. So we have messages because we have been invited to this team. So obviously it's just letting us know here's a few projects you might be interested in joining, which I don't think it's going to be able to give us anything right now because there aren't any projects. But if I go back to my Asana view, I will also have a message in the inbox. You see, again, I have this little uh, yellow dot here that's going to disappear as soon as I click on it. And that's definitely going to let me know that Andrew has accepted my invite to join. Because I, that's always what it, whenever you invite someone to your workspace, when they finally accept, you will get this notification that they accepted your invite. And you can check on the status of the people you invited to your workspace by going into your admin console. And from here, there'll be a tab for members. And here you see this person is a member, a member. If he had received the invite, but not yet accepted, it would say something like pending invite. So that's yeah, exactly pending invite. So that's how you can kind of keep track of have they actually joined your workspace. Maybe you missed something and you're waiting for when someone's actually logging in and joining the team. Now I'm going to quickly create a project and add a few tasks in there. So we have some things to play with in this lecture. Don't worry about how to do that. Now we'll go into detail on that later on. All right. Now, if we go back to our home, we're going to see some of these tasks starting to populate in there. So I'm here in my Asana and I go to my home and now I start to see a few upcoming tasks and I can see they're part of this project, new product development. If I go into my, my tasks, I see the full list and I can see that they are here in the section recently assigned. If the date started to get closer, it would automatically move into the relevant section of due today, due next week, due later. 
If you create a task from here in the My Tasks screen, it's automatically going to be private to you. That's why I've set it now as a project so that I could assign a few things to Andrew as well. So let's go into Andrew's Asana and see what he's seeing now in his home and his My Tasks. So let's go into the home. Here he has four tasks that are due. He also has them in recently assigned and you see he has this little blue dot next to it. That's unique. You didn't see that on my profile because I'm the one who created the task. Whereas because this is on Andrew, it's just kind of an extra little notification for him that, that someone's made something for him. So maybe if he went to his Asana this morning, he already did a quick look at what was in there. And then he comes back in the afternoon and goes, oh, there's a little blue dot on this one. This one is, is really, really recently assigned. And again, he has some notifications here on his inbox because he has another yellow dot. So let's go and have a read. And we see here that it sent him a little notification every time I had created a task for him. So let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. Let's go ahead and read these notifications. You see when I hover over a notification, I have this extra three little boxes appearing. So first of all, I can go ahead and archive the notification. That's basically marking it as red. And you see as well here, I have two options. I have the activity and the archive. Right now, there's nothing in my archive. Everything is here in the activity. But let's say I read that, I see, okay, Nikki's assigned me a new task to launch and gather feedback. I got plenty of time, I got until August. So I'm gonna go ahead and archive this notification that takes it away and it puts it over here in the archive. And if you ever archive something by mistake, you just go in here and you literally click the opposite. So moving it back to the inbox and that's gonna pop it back here in your inbox. And you saw again, the little yellow notification. So let's archive a few of these. What else can we do? We can bookmark a task. This can be useful if you want to come back to it later on. You can also create a follow-up task or leave it as unread so that you can come back and, and look into it later. So for example, if I wanted to create a follow-up task, that's quite handy because rather than having to go into the project and then find the task and then build it there in the subtasks, like you're gonna find how to do later, we can just directly go, okay, I gotta order and test samples. So I quickly wanna create a follow-up task on this so that I remember to start looking into that two weeks before the deadline. But more often than not, you are gonna be directly archiving all of these notifications. So let's go ahead and do that now. And now we have a nice clean inbox zero. And again, if you need to go back, don't worry, just go back there to the archive. If you do notice you're getting a lot of notifications, maybe from one task in particular, and you're not very interested in it, you find it clogging your inbox, then you can always unfollow that task. And I'll show you how to do that in a future video.